Welcome back to yet another video. Hope you're enjoying this channel. If you are new to the team, grab a seat, buckle up, because today we are going to learn how to create a color palette system in Figma. Yes, you heard that right. I said system. Believe it or not, picking up color combination, it's not an art. It can be if you want to, but if you're struggling to pick up colors for your projects, like I personally do, there is a system that will allow you to pick your color palette with ease. Today we're going to do just that, and I'm super excited to share this with you. So let me show you how easy it is. First and foremost, let's open the Figma document that I've prepared for you and which you can download in the description. You see, I always take care of you guys. So once you download the file, import it in Figma and open it. Inside, you will find your design system file, which contains the typography scale and the color palette system. If you missed my first video on how to create the typography system, I left a link for you in the description and I'll also add a card to this video so you can check it out and understand how I created that. Also, make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. As in the next couple of videos, we will add to our design system a couple of more elements that will make the document that you just downloaded a fully fledged design system that you will be able to use in all your future projects. Okay, so if we look here, you will see that you have a special section where I summarized five rules you will need to follow when composing your color palette. So let me explain how this works. So when you combine colors, you have five rules that you can follow, which is monochromatic, analogous, complementary, split complementary, and triadic. Monochromatic means that you're gonna use a single primary color for your project. So if you pick, for example, red, then you'll have the option to play around with different saturations or brightness of the same color. The analogous is basically using two colors that are next to each other on the wheel. So for example, if your primary color is red, then you can pick as a secondary color uh, orange, or you can pick a purple. The complementary rule states that you can use colors that are on opposite side of the color wheel. So for example, if you, your prim primary color is blue, then your second pick can be orange. The split complementary works in, in a similar way like the complementary, but you will use this only if you need to have three colors. And usually in UI design, we only use primary and secondary, but you may want to use a third one. And this is when this rule comes in place. So for example, the split complementary, as I stated, works exactly the same as the complementary one, but instead of only picking the color opposite to your primary color, like in our example here from orange, instead of picking blue, you can pick this darker shade of blue and this green one. And the triadic works in a similar way like the split complementary, but the colors have to be at an equal distance on the circle from each other. So in our example, we have purple, orange and green. Besides this, you still have one more rule to follow, and that is the 60-30-10, the mighty golden rule of the great UI. Rule which I added here in the document, so you're welcome for that as well. So if we look at the document, basically what this rule does is to help you pick the amount of color for your UI. So 60% of your UI should be your background color which could be white, black, or any other color you want your background to be. 30% of your UI should contain a color that will help you create sections or cards or any other elements. And in other words, now that we learned the theory, should be part of a monochromatic palette, which if you picked white like I did, then it should be like light gray. And the last 10% should be your primary color. This is sometimes referred as the brand color as well. This depends on which color you want to use as your primary one. The beautiful thing about this role and how we created these elements here is that if you change the colors with the ones you pick, you can immediately visualize how your UI will look and feel. And that's why I decided to add this in the document. Also, underneath here, I defined for you all colors you'll need to pick before starting your project. So before you start any UI project, you need to have at least these colors, which is primary, secondary, grays, and then you will need colors for success, warning, and errors, which I highly recommend you to stick with green, yellow, and red. Now, for the primary color, I also give you explanation underneath 
each section so you will understand what you're gonna do with these colors. For the primary ones, this is the primary color palette and it is used across all your interactive elements like buttons, links, inputs and so on. The secondary color is optional because if you want to have a monochromatic color palette, then you won't need the secondary color. But if you pick a secondary color, this one will be used alongside the primary color palette to direct the user to the secondary interactive elements. Same thing, buttons, links, and so on. And the last one is grays. You will need to pick a good variety of grays so that you can add it to your elements like icons and text and so on. Okay, so now that we know all these rules and we know what colors we need to pick before we can start designing, we are ready to start generating our color palette. And for that, I personally use these free resources that again, I added in the document. So the first one that I use is colors.co and I mainly use this just to get inspiration. I can either start the generator and just generate a couple of colors so I can see what I like and what I don't like. The way you use this one is just by simply tapping your space bar and it will automatically generate the color palette for you. And then you can pick a color com combination that you like. The other option is to just go on explore. Here you're going to be able to see what other people are putting together as color palettes. So this is made by other users and just shared with the community. So you can scroll through them and just start seeing the color palette that pops out and that maybe you'll want to use in your UI. So for example, this is a monochromatic color palette and then you can scroll around and see what pops out and what you would like to use. Now the second resource is called color.adobe.com. The way you use it is either by generating colors with the theory that we just discussed, like you have here on the left side, monochromatic, triad, complementary, or the way I do it is I like to use this function that extracts themes. And the way I do it is by simply going to dribble, downloading something that I really like. Afterwards, I select the file, just go to the desktop, import the file, just open it, and then you have this option to pick the colors that you want from the actual image. And if you look here, it's super easy to do this because you will understand how to proportion the colors in your future UI as well. So for example, if I pick this green, I know that this will be 60% of my design, like we discussed for our golden rule. Then afterwards, if I pick this blue, I can see that is roughly 30% of the UI. So this will be the, my 30%. Then if you look carefully, you have 10%, which is red. And then afterwards you have this, uh, you have this yellow. So basically it means that this has a primary and a secondary color palette. So this is how you can use images to just translate to your color palette. And this is why this is one of my favorite tools. Now the third resource is called zero to 255. And what this basically does is helping you generate those lighter shades of the color that we discussed in the monochromatic role. So for example, if I go back here to our image and if I want to pick, for example, this red because I like it, I can just copy the hex code, go to zero to 255, paste the code here, hit enter, and this will automatically generate all those shades of red. So for example, if I want to have a monochromatic color palette, then I simply put this as my primary color. And then afterwards I can just copy the hex codes for the other colors in order. And I can pick if I want to go step by step or you can skip a few shades. This all depends on you. A thing to keep in mind if you work with red, yellow or green as your primary color is to make sure that they're distinctive enough so they don't clash with the success, warning and error colors. And basically, this is all you need. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you find it useful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already in a 2021 style. And don't forget to leave your questions in the comments below so I can answer them. Till next time, take care and I will see you in the next video.